This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 164 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, we're talking about how to have organic Instagram growth with Erica Fraser from Mom Break. Now, you're going to hear her story, the experience of what she has happened, but what I want you to make sure that you take away from this interview is the fact that Erica was able to figure out how to have organic Instagram growth by following her numbers, by watching to see what works with her community. And the experience that she therefore had afterwards because she was being found then on the Explore page because of the intentions and strategies that she had put in place based on her analytics is what made all the difference for her organic Instagram growth. All right, let's dive in. Hi, Erica. How are you? Hi, I'm super excited to chat with you today. I'm so excited. This is an interview that I've wanted to do for quite some time, and I'm glad we were able to finally schedule it. Uh, Would you first start off by introducing yourself and your businesses? Yes, I am Erica. I'm hiding up here in the cold uh, winter of Ottawa in Canada. (laughs) I feel like I always have to point that out because I know a lot of your audience is in the States, and it's so chilly right now here in Canada. (laughs) Um, but I, I, there's sort of two parts to my business. One is by trade. I'm a professional marketer. So I help small businesses really just take the overwhelm out of marketing. The idea is to make marketing easy and fun and more accessible, but the true heart and soul of what I love doing is my blog called mum break, which is a, (laughs) I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's a mummy blog. It's a, it's a mummy blog, but the idea is that I can help take the pressure out of motherhood and the overwhelm out of it by just sharing my very normal, very boring everyday life. Yes. And how long have you had mom break for? Oh my goodness. So I just realized the other day, it's been three years now. It's been crazy. I can't believe time goes by so quick. I also have two young children. I always forget to introduce them, but I think, you know, mom blog, it's assumed, I guess, or else that would be a little bit creepy. (laughs) imagine. <laughs> no, oh my goodness, for sure. Um, so we're going to talk about today about your Instagram because that is what I mean, it has just blown up. I think in the amount of time that you were you were in a mastermind with me for 6 months, I think you went through like a huge explosion, but I think I want to start off with the really talking about how you feel like that happened because there was a time when I feel like you were analyzing your engagement on Instagram and you know, to look for certain things. What was it that you were looking for? Yeah. And I think actually I I did forget to mention how that mom break side of my business, that's how we met, right? It's, I was looking for, even though I'm a professional marketer by trade, what I, I struggled with and what I needed help with was how that related and how that connected in the influencer marketing blogging space. Cause there's so many different tactics and techniques. So I was, I reached out to work with you, joined the mastermind and sort of just escalated over that. And you're part of the reason why you got me thinking about the, the look and the feel of my Instagram and, and some of the, the engagement and the things that I'm looking for, because we all have a love hate relationship with this algorithm. <laughs> it, it actually is really great, some of these changes, if you know what you're looking for. And for me, from a Instagram engagement perspective, I don't care at all about likes. So getting rid of likes was a non-thing for me. I love and really strive to get as much engagement from a content, comment and sharing perspective. So the more comments that I get and the more times that it's shared, you know, when you can go into your insights and see that little, is it an airplane? Little, I always call it. What is it? Yeah. I know. Right. So we'll just call it the little paper airplane. And when you see how many times it's been messaged or shared or saved, those are signs to me that the content is resonating with the audience. When I see comments in my feed on my feed post saying things like, oh my goodness, you literally always write exactly what I'm thinking, then I know that the content that I'm putting out is really resonating. And 
I went through a long period of testing what resonated because it didn't always stick. There was times when things super flopped and that's okay because I knew not to do that. But the look that I was going for was really just something that was shareable, well, not look, but the, what the type of thing I was trying to produce was something that was easily shareable. Is that a word? Easily sh- you're, you're the TX teacher. I will say it's a word. It works. It's okay. You get the point, right? It, d- it does the job. Exactly. And that resonated with the audience from the perspective of being able to see that in comments. And I did a lot of testing to land on where I'm at now. What did you, what would you say you noticed your audience was reacting the best to? It's so funny. I remember our con- our conversation when I finally had, I don't know if you probably don't remember, but. Yes, I do. I, oh, I so do. <laughs> I, so I'm also given that my marketing, given that I have my marketing background, I'm an analytics junkie. I, I thrive off of, and I let the numbers drive what I'm doing And if they align with my passion and the things that I'm experiencing in my real life, like that's the goal. That's the sweet spot for me. But I was looking through my analytics one day and I I just, for whatever reason, I sorted my Instagram posts by reach, I think it was. And I noticed that every single one of my top posts for reach was this. And now I call it, it's this sort of become the known as the gray wall, (laughs) the gray wall post, every single one of those posts at the top of my reach for the last six months was this gray wall. And if you don't haven't seen my page, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But essentially, through all of this process of testing and trying different things, I tried taking pictures of myself because, you know, Instagram, isn't it like an accelerated selfie? I don't know how to describe it, but I'm standing in front of a gray wall. I set my phone up on a tripod. I set the timer. I go and pose really awkwardly and throw on a filter. And then what I do is I take the key pain points and the key challenges that I'm addressing in the actual caption and I overlay it in text on the picture. Yes. So (laughs) we had um, a one-on-one shortly after I had this epiphany. I'm like, Jenny, I'm going to just do something crazy. I'm going to stop posting anything else except for pictures of these gray walls because surprise, these are like performing four or five times better than every single other post. And you're just like, yeah, (laughs) I noticed that too. It was because that when it happens with the algorithm, those were the posts that were popping into my feed is that the ones with the gray wall and it always had writing over the top. So I, when you said it to me, I was like, oh, I thought you were already doing it because that's all I was seeing were the ones like that. So now if you are a listener and you don't know what we're talking about, you need, you need to go look. So Erica, your um, Instagram handle is at mom dot break. I thought, so that's why I hesitated. Yeah. So it's at mom dot break. So it's like a period, not actually the word dot, just like a little the dot, the actual physical thing, um, go look and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. This gray wall that she had, but that was the amazing thing. I think that you did though. You looked at it, looked at it for reach, saw that that's what was happening. And people were, like you said, it makes it shareable because you have that pain point and they're feeling, yes, this is so me. And then you continued with the rest of the post to really build off of the pain point that you had hit with the words that drew their attention in. Um, I do remember that conversation. (laughs) Conversations like that get me excited because not only were you looking at your analytics to help you decide upon this, but when you said it, I was like, oh, I thought you were already doing it (laughs) because that's what Instagram was showing me. It, the algorithm was doing its job. It was working the way that we hate that it works, but it worked properly. And it gave you more information about what your people are really looking for. Yeah. And I think it was such a, epiphany moment to me because I had spent and I, I think that's the one mistake that people make they think that they have they put something out there well not the one mistake but one of the biggest mistakes they put something out there and they think that it's final and then it sticks and they can never change it the amount of times that I've tried new things and changed different tactics or the amount of filters I have bought and changed it is like a little rainbow of filters if you scroll through all my different feeds I've tried it because I was just waiting for that moment of what stuck. Now, 
Instagram doesn't love pictures like that with text on them. So it's not going to work for everybody. So I, I think people are now trying to replicate it thinking it's just like a magic Instagram solution. That's not the case. It just, it works for my audience with the messaging that I'm adding in. But I think it's just, it goes to show that to get to that point where you find what works for you, you have to test things and be okay with failing first. Yes. So let's talk a little bit more about that because you intentionally created a brand for yourself in order to have that organic Instagram growth. How would you actually recommend that others do this? Because I think you've really touched on something so important, right? Everyone's audience is different. So how do we go about figuring out how we're going to have that organic Instagram growth? Whether you're a seasoned podcaster or just thinking of starting a podcast, you need to listen to Buzzcast from the folks at Buzzsprout. Buzzcast covers everything a podcaster should know from marketing strategies and how to make money from your podcast to the latest and greatest tech and industry insights to keep you on the cutting edge. Follow Buzzcast by clicking the link in the description or go to buzzcast.buzzsprout.com and keep podcasting. I think there's two things that I would recommend because you're right. The everyone out there and their mother is trying to sell solutions that are going to help and improve and grow you to X number of followers, whatever it might, whatever the promise might be. But people don't factor in that everybody's audience is different. Everyone's pain points are different. Everybody's lifestyle constraints are different. And that's one of the big things I focus on when working with some of my marketing clients is that there may be specific ways that are the quote unquote best ways to do things. But if those don't fit into the time constraints of your lifestyle, that's not the right way to do it. So I think it's, it's just important to remember that everybody is different and there's not one right way, but there's, there's two sort of things from a growing from an organic growth perspective is number one, focusing on the pain. <laughs> and that sounds such a, it's such a negative association behind it, but it's really taking that what your audience is struggling with ask them, get to know them, talk to them. Literally, I ask people in Instagram polls once every month, once every two months, what are you struggling with the most right now? Find out what's hard for them and what's causing them grief and keeping them up at night and then solve that problem or speak to that problem. It's not about just focusing and bitching and complaining about the problem. It's about accepting that we're all human. We're struggling with whatever this might be and helping them to either solve it in a practical, functional way, or just saying, you know what, it's okay to feel this way right now. I'm here. I'm with you. Yes. The way that you even said in the beginning that your people would comment about how you took the words, it's like you're in my head. That right there lets you know that you are, you're hitting on the pain points that they have. You're connecting with them. And I think that's what we all so often need to be really starting to focus on is connecting with them. And like you said, solving that problem. So now when you, ha- you recently, actually, I don't even, it was like two, three months ago. How long ago was it now? Oh, I've buried it deep into my, <laughs> it, it was like probably three months ago now, maybe. Okay. So about three months ago, you had crazy experience um, that happened actually because I feel because of your organic Instagram growth that they were starting to see you more in their feed and you were being recommended um, to other posts. So can you tell us about the experience and what happened? And I know that there's certain things you don't want to touch in because I know that this was, it was a, it was a big thing. So, well, no, it, it's good because I think that I talked about it originally in my own podcast right after it happened And I think looking back on it now, that was too soon. Things were too raw. They were too fresh. And I didn't have the same perspective I have now. So now at this point in time, it still is difficult, but it is enough time has passed and enough perspective has been put into place that I think it's a good time to talk about it. So essentially what happened is my blog mum break is just designed to showcase my life in an everyday fashion. I very much sort of use it as the Truman show of mom life. It's, I'm just showing the normal things from, you know, struggling with my postpartum body positivity to 
getting my kids ready in snowsuits because again, I'm in Canada and that's a struggle that I don't wish on my worst enemy. <laughs> all of the things in between are getting my kids to eat tantrums, showcasing all of that. So about 16 months postpartum of my se- after my second child, I decided that I needed to start focusing on myself and my health. I was a former elite athlete. I was feeling really disconnected with my body. I really just truly needed to prioritize me. So I made the conscious choice to showcase and share my health journey as I started as a, you know, year and a half postpartum to try to get back to, not back to, try to find the healthy, happy version, new version of myself. And that involved losing weight. (laughs) Like I was technically after speaking with my doctor and my nutritionist, I was in the stage where I needed to be healthy to lose weight. So I made the choice to showcase that and to document all the steps in the process, not going for the idea of having a before and after journey, but just aligned with my brand, letting people know what I'm doing. It's a common, it's a common struggle. So (laughs) as a part of this process, I did a lot of side by side pictures in front of this gray wall we chatted about. where I would take a picture, what I actually, it's funny because actually most people don't know this, the quote unquote start starter picture, like the baseline for the evolution of change throughout my health journey is actually just a random picture I found on my Instagram feed. That was one of the few where I'm just looking at the camera and it's a full body shot. It wasn't ever done for this purpose. It was just I mean, I'm busy. I have two kids. I'm working full time. I just picked whatever was easily accessible and that became the baseline for this health journey. And every few weeks, I would then take a new picture in front of the gray wall in the same outfit, overlay them and crop them in a horribly Photoshopped way side by side because I'm not a Photoshop master and put them beside each other and have sort of an inspirational caption associated with it. It wasn't always about weight. It could have been about one of them was that hey, you know what? I now was able to run for five minutes at a time. I used to be a big runner. I loved running. So it's just documenting my health journey. So all that to say, one day I posted a picture and I was so proud of myself because I had gotten to the stage where my jeans didn't fit anymore. And I'm gonna I'm gonna forever be this person now. Full disclaimer, size doesn't matter. I have I've like been conditioned to say that now, or else I'm gonna get physically attacked by people. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see why in a second. But I so I ended up having to go. I went to the store. American Eagle are my favorite jeans. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. That would be super cool. Imagine <laughs> I'm such a big deal. I'm sponsored by American Eagle. That would be cool. Goals. Um, so I ended up going to the store. I, I bought a jean, jeans, three sizes smaller than I had already had. And I posted a picture about it saying that, you know, I started as a size 14. I'm excited because size doesn't matter, but it's a reflection of this journey and all the hard work I've put into it. And I'm starting along this health process. I'm now a size eight. <laughs> and I got so much positive support from my, my audience and my crew. And it, because of that good old algorithm, it picked up steam and I started to pop into the explore page. Now I have a love hate relationship with this explore page. Now (laughs) it's everyone's goal, isn't it? Like everyone really wants to be on the explore page, but the problem with the explore page is that the people who see it don't always want to see the stuff that's on there. Right. So Eventually what happened was it started attracting a lot of attention from the body positivity world, people who didn't know me, who didn't follow me. I started getting a lot of comments with things along the lines of that's not possible. You, I can't remember the time frame. I think it was, I'm going to say two to three months. I, I dropped three sizes and I'll say to you guys, I never qualified my experience with them, but to you guys, I'm happy doing it. I had like mom, Tom, baby pooch. So I lost the weight because I had the bloat and the extra skin in my stomach. So that's really the only place I lost it was that tire. I don't know if there's, there's no correct, politi- politically correct way of saying that, but it's yeah, the best I, way to describe it. You know what you're talking about. You're I'm correct. trying to do this for audio as opposed to <laughs> you. If you saw me in a video picture, I'd be just doing some hand gestures that made no sense, but 
the <laughs> the problem was is it was starting to get a lot of attention from people who didn't follow me, who hadn't seen the whole journey from start to finish. They didn't know me and my intentions as a person. And I was starting to get some really mean comments, things like, and I sort of tried to go back and look at them so I could remember for this podcast, but just things like you're lying. That's not true. That's not possible. And they started picking apart all the details on each picture, like the nail polish I was wearing in one versus the other, the hair I was wearing in one versus the other, the necklace, which actually it's funny. I'm wearing the same necklace right now. I don't take it off, but it's, they, they started to really dismantle those things. But then I started getting some there's a difference between, and I'm, I don't know if you've experienced this or anybody has between just sort of mean comments and really horrifyingly, just like aggressively mean comments. The ones that are mean and hurtful are just the trolls. I'm okay with. They're the bless them and block them people. Yes. But there started being like guys with guns coming out and it was just picture something that would make you scared and uncomfortable. And those were the comments that I was getting. And I didn't understand where they were coming from because every single time I opened my Instagram, I would get like five or six new comments with these random poor people who didn't even follow me. They weren't followers. They were clearly just coming from the explore page. But then (laughs) I remember I was sitting at, so I also have part-time at a day job as well. I was sitting at my desk at work And a friend of mine sent me a message saying, I don't know if you're aware, you probably already are, but there's a Reddit thread about you. Like, oh God, what is happening? Right. And then it all clicked. I went and looked at the thread and I realized that what had happened was somebody who had seen my post from the Explore page had taken all of my pictures and had taken all of my comments and my responses to comments and posted them on Reddit on a, it's like a subreddit where you actively post things to make fun of people. It's like a a feed where you, you're, she actually went onto Reddit, asked people where to post things to criticize people and then posted it to those two threads. Cause you can see all the history in Reddit. And then all of those people were coming from Reddit, going out of their way to go to my Instagram to leave me in comments. And the Reddit threads were bad. (laughs) It was insane. I remember the message that I got from you were like, I don't know what to do with this. What, what is going on right now? And it was crazy. Like you said, and I think, you know, people think about, I want to be on the explore page, but then you have to think about, okay, that explore page, people are seeing you popping in there. And like you said, some of them don't want to see that kind of stuff. It's stuff that has triggered them in the past and made them react to common in the past. So now it's also something that again, is going to trigger them um, because it's about the weight and it's about us talking about body image and whatever else um, that it sets them off for sure. And, but the amazing thing about, I think that the way that you handled it, because there's always going to be those things, right. That trigger others. And the way that you handle it in this instance is the way that you've actually created that amazing community. So can you talk about how you actually handled it with your community? Because I think this is what sets you apart from many others. And I think that in that moment, I know that you were like air kicked out of you at the time when it was all happening, but somehow you still managed to like handle it so well with your community. Aww. Thank you so much. Um, I think, so I don't think anything really prepares you for something like this. And it's really hard to explain how I felt in that moment because Some of the comments on Reddit were things like, oh, she's a terrible mom. She probably lets her kids run around with knives while she ignores her kids for blogging, blah, blah, blah. And that, that for me is a trigger because I pride myself in taking amazing care of my children. They're my pride. They're I would die for them. Um, Oh, she looks rich, rich bitch, blah, 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 blah. There's no way she's lying. But anyways, they were just really, it's funny because I made my brother go through and read them because I couldn't. So one of the ways that I handled it was I, (laughs) messaging you was the very first thing that I did. And it's so funny because I didn't tell you this at the time, but I was so, I was at my desk when I saw the post, I literally just blanked out, got up, put my jacket on and walked outside. And I couldn't remember your name for the life of me. I was just so, I was like, I need to message my business coach. What is her name? And I couldn't, I was so in shock that I was, I couldn't, I forget, I had to find you from some other way because I couldn't remember your name to even find you to message you because I was so 
sh shaken up and in shock by some of these. I made it probably five or six comments on the Reddit thread and then I closed it down. But one of the ways that I dealt with it was I, I talked to you. I had like a really good, ugly cry in my car and that was super helpful. So thank you for that. <laughs> and I, then I decided just to take some time. I knew that I wasn't going to accomplish anything productive by getting in there and act, actively dealing with it right away. I, I took a step back. I told my Instagram audience, this has just happened. I'm struggling with it. It's hard. And I'm not sure what my next steps are, but I know that I need to take a step back from Instagram right now. I'll come back when I'm ready. And the amount of support I got for that was huge. And then the really cool thing, cool, actually, it was really cool. I was so proud of them because I made a point not to attack any of the comments back just to, and I, I also made a point to not clarify or argue with them. So if they say, oh, you're faking this, this, and this, I never said, well, I wear this necklace every single, single day. I ever, like, I, that's not my, I don't owe them that. And it's true. I have all the explanations for everything, but I'm not going to get into a detailed battle with random trolls online. But the cool thing was, was that my audience did. So they, when I sent that Instagram stories, they went and they really went to battle and they stood up for me and they just proved that we had this, in, there were Instagram friends. We've had this community where we built relationships and trust with each other. So while I was taking my time, stepping back from the platform, they were stepping up for me and defending me. Then what I did was the very first thing I did was I called my therapist and I said, I need to see you now because I don't know how to deal with this. I didn't have the tool set to be able to do it. And the, the biggest thing we identified when we went to therapy was that, or when I went to therapy, was that it's okay to feel all of these things. I don't need to be tough. I don't need to pretend like these things don't hurt me because it is normal for all of the comments that I received to affect anyone. It's actually, it'd be less normal if they didn't bother you at all. Right. So I, I acknowledge that this whole process made me feel really unsafe. It made me feel attacked. It made me feel as though I was worried about how it would be managed with my children. Because the very first thing I thought before I even couldn't remember your name and just thought to call you, I was like, what, how is this going to affect my children? Where are they? Like, I don't want because people on the Reddit thread were bringing up my kids for some reason. So I, that was the very first instinct. And then that, I just, the whole process made this platform seem so scary and unsafe to me. So it was just about taking a step back and letting it be okay that I was sad and that this was hard and not being ashamed of that. Yes. And I, you did that. You got on Instagram stories quickly and did that, right? That's how you shared that with them. Cause you're always on stories. You're amazing with stories. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I'm there quite often. <laughs> if you do follow me at mom.break, just be prepared. There's a, <laughs> there's a heavy cadence of stories because I'm just I very much again, like it's the Truman Shore is a story of mom blogging. I'm just sharing my life. But that was, I felt that it was a really good opportunity to hop on there and just tell them what was going on. And that very much, I think, helped me because it also allowed me to be, think that it was okay to take this step back right. and just process in my own time. I think the amazing piece to me was that when I looked through the comments and even when your people were going to battle for you, they weren't doing it negatively. Mm -hmm. but that was the amazing piece to me because you were such a positive person. And even the way you, like you started before I think you knew what was going on, you were interacting to the comments and you were so positive. You're always, well, this is the way of my journey. And you weren't, and there was no name calling. There was no, you're an idiot. Get off of here. None of that which <laughs> would have come out of my mouth. Um, but your audience turned around and did the same thing. And they were so positive and they were so kind and just told them that, if this isn't where you want to be, you shouldn't be looking at this. It can clearly, I mean, I remember watching someone say it clearly triggered you to the girl that did it. Cause she kept coming back. That was, like, oh. that was, that was the person I know who you're talking about. That was the person who did the Reddit thread. Yes. Yes. And she wow. kept coming back into the comments and everyone kept seeing her. And one of the girls I remember seeing her being so kind saying, this isn't a you 
you need to block just for your own health. Like you need to block these kind of hashtags. You shouldn't be looking at this kind of stuff. It clearly triggers you and makes you a crazy person. She didn't say that, but (laughs) but that was the amazing piece to me is that you've just built this such a fabulous community that not only trusts you and supports you, but they trusted and supported everyone else that was there. And still they were so kind to the ones that were being crazy. And I think that's... (sighs) That's the thing that I I love so much about my community. And it's actually what I explicitly asked them in stories too. I said, we're better than this. We, these, there's some, this is, these are their problems. They're saying things that are hurtful. Say your piece, but like, let's take the high road. And that's always the approach that I, I go is when you're saying something on social media, if I wouldn't say it to you in person in real life, I'm not going to type it on a keyboard. And that's always been my philosophy don't get me wrong. I'm happy to in person. If I ever met that Reddit girl in person, I would very, be very comfortable telling her that she's a horrible, she was a whore, did a horrible thing. I'm not saying she's a horrible human being, but she did a horrible thing. And it was very disrespectful and just awful, but it's, it's about setting up your audience by example. You're not telling people what to do necessarily all the time. You're just leading by example. So for instance, I'm never going to tell somebody to go Um, for mom guilt, as an example, I'm never going to tell anybody, tell someone you need to go out with your friends more. It's important that you do this for your own health, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to show them going out with my friends and I'm just going to live the life that brings me joy and they can choose and pick and choose what works for them. And I think that's what played out in this thread really well is that my audience just really fed off of how I interacted as well. Yes. No, I definitely agree. It's entirely what happened. Um, so now we're looking at this, if we were to find ourselves in a similar experience, what would you recommend the, to step back and kind of take a look at it? One of the, actually, one of the other questions, cause I feel like you kind of touched on that question. And this one may kind of throw you a little bit. Cause I didn't tell you, I was going to ask you this. <laughs> Do you know what your numbers were like pre this craziness or even pre like, actually let's go and think about your numbers before you started getting this like consistent kind of, um, the, the, the gray wall, let's just call it. (laughs) Yeah. So (laughs) I remember having, I remember saying something to you when I had my little hysterical meltdown in the car with you. (laughs) And I said, or you said, this is how Jenna Kutcher got big. Do you remember that? Yes. I was like, okay, well, maybe something positive can come out of it. It's horrible, but like, maybe it'll be huge. And I do know the answer to this question because it's a disappointing one is that there was actually more of a negative impact in this specific scenario to my following than there was a positive one. Like I had gained a lot of traction momentum from that post. The post itself, I think got me maybe like 1500 to 2000 new followers, But then after all the hate happened, there wasn't an exponential growth. The growth stopped and plateaued out. Maybe it was because I dropped off social media for a bit. That's very possible. Um, But it's still, since the gray wall started, it's still been an overall exponential growth. But this did not have the the Jenna Kutcher haughty husband effect that I was hoping it was. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I think too, I mean, part of that could very well be you know, the audience that you were drawing in, right? Like you're very specific with your niche and your moms that you're pulling in for that. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, the big thing for me, I think that we, the, the experience that you had was crazy. Um, the, the growth though, like you said, didn't happen because of the experience, the growth was happening because of the gray wall. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm forever going to call it the gray wall. <laughs> I know. And now every time I see people, other people doing gray walls, I was like, that's my gray wall. Yeah. Good job guy. Tag me. Hey, so I love the way that you just said that. And I want to point that out because I think this yeah. is something that bloggers really have a hard time with is that the second we see someone imitating us, we get all bent out of shape and it becomes, you're trying to be mean. You're stealing what I did, whether it's a recipe, whether it is a, um, name of something, whether it is the look of something. I think the way that you just said it, like, Hey, good job. You're testing something with Steve. It's going to work for your audience. See if it doesn't, then if it doesn't move on. A lot of people have gray walls in their house. It's nothing special. And I think it's funny because like mom blogging, I'm not, I'm not special. I I'm not doing anything different. 
I'm just not afraid to try new things and to fail. It's, so I just had a situation recently where, how do I say this without, essentially there was some concerns about copyright infringement on something that was not in fact that special. It was, a, it's a proven, it's a proven strategy that everybody else is already doing. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. We're all just trying it out. And just because my gray wall does well, if your gray wall does really well, it's not going to affect my gray wall post at all in any way. Why can't we both have awesome gray walls? Yes. So important because it's really about you as the person and the pain points that you're hitting for your audience, right? It's not what it really comes back to you. It's about making sure you're solving that problem for your audience and they're giving a chance to connect with you. Um, I think that that's such a huge takeaway that I have no intention of walking into today, but I'm <laughs> glad that it happened. See, it was meant to happen. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. And it's, it's important though, because it's, I, it goes back to that collaboration over competition, right? Like I think that as women, if more women see other women doing well, it it opens up the room and opportunity for other people as well. If somebody who's, let's say, a direct competitor of mine does really well, that in no way, if anything, that only helps me because it, it sets the groundwork for me to reach brands and say, hey, I know that you're already working with this person. They've paved the way for it. It's like a first child. I'm like the second child. The first child did all the work made all the difficult decisions for the parents and the second child just gets to reap the benefits. I'm fine being the second child. Yes. Oh, so good. So you right now, you have, you put together an offer where you actually walk people through how you grew your Instagram following in a mini series. So to help have that organic um, Instagram growth, can you tell me a bit about what I would learn in it? Yes. So it's funny because I have forever wanted just to ask other bloggers out there, tell me exactly what you did to grow your Instagram following. What did you do? What did you try? Who did you work with? Did you use stories? Did you use videos? Did you use hashtags? Did you, what did you do? I so badly wanted to just open, and maybe this is my love of analytics, or maybe this is just, this is a really kind of cagey industry. I've so badly wanted to know behind the scenes what people are doing. So I made a mini series offering exactly that from start to finish in the last three years, every single tactic that I took in the perspective of a mini series, I'm telling you a story about how I employed those tactics. What did I do? Did I buy followers? Did I use follow loops? Did I do giveaways? All of those things. And then at the end, I do a summary of what I regret, what I'm happy I did and some extra bonuses in there. And it, it all stemmed from wanting that. So I'm just, Full disclosure, just full disclosure, just giving it all away. I love that. And I think, you know, and like you said, you're going to test certain things that have worked for you and people are going to be able to apply it and see if it works for them. Right. Um, so we're going to link to that in the show notes so they can make sure that they hop over and grab that. Erica, what's the price point on that? Because I feel like it's something that's not high enough, but <laughs> it's actually super cheap. It's so it's 25 us dollars or Canadian dollars, huh, which means it's like under $20 US. But I'm going to give you guys a 20% off coupon because I like to undersell myself and Jenny Melrose 10% off. <laughs> Jenny, as I'm doing video with her, she's shaking her head right now. Charge more. But no, take advantage of my silly mistake and go buy it at howigrewmyinstagram.com. Jenny Melrose, 10% off. $20. We're going to um, link to that in the show notes that you guys can make sure that you get that. I clearly don't agree with the price point. We're going to have to talk about <laughs> it afterwards. Um, but it will stay that price point for you all because she just went and did that. And I want to... So, but we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> Erica, where are the best places to follow along with you? So Instagram, I hang out the most at mum dot which is as we talked about earlier is a period yeah. not the word dot mom period break yeah. and the website that's best to reach me go mumbreak.ca or all of my links all of my content is at ericafraser.com perfect and you also have a podcast because we are podcast listeners um you have two different podcasts now yeah I like to do too much um <laughs> I am a content marketer by trade, so I just love pumping things like this out. But I have 
a podcast for each of my corresponding businesses. The marketing side of things is called Mum Blogging Unplugged. And I talk all about the behind the scenes of this cagey world of mum blogging. And the mom arm of the podcast is the Mum Break Podcast. Okay. And which podcast was the episode that you talked about what happened too early? Mum Blogging Unplugged. Yeah, too early. It's funny because I should go back and listen to it. But holy, if I look back day two after getting ripped apart on two Reddit threads, it was fresh. It was not eh. But you can go listen to me being all po- pretending to be positive about it on Mum Blogging Unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to go and listen to it because yeah. I, I haven't heard it yet and want to definitely hear it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I put on the best brave face I could, but I was struggling behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, and, and rightfully so. Which, which is we, normal. Yes, exactly. Erica, thank you so much for taking the time to hop on with us and share your information. I'm so excited they're going to be able to take care, to take advantage of that super cheap offer. (laughs) Uh, Again, we'll link to that in the show notes, but I appreciate you so much. Thank you, Jenny. This was a blast. Of course. All right. Well, there you have it. I want you to make sure that you hop over and take advantage of the offer that Erica is providing y'all with. We have linked to that discount as well as the actual link with the offer for her Instagram mini series that you can find out exactly what she did in order to grow her account the way that she has. We appreciate you so much for taking the time to listen in. I'd love to see where you're listening. Tag me at Jenny underscore Melrose as well as Erica at mom.break on your Instagram stories. Take a quick screenshot. We would love to know what you thought of the episode. We also want to make sure to let you know that as you heard, Erica was talking about our mastermind and we have some exciting news coming out at Influencer Entrepreneurs Academy here in Charlotte. I'm going to be announcing some exciting changes to our mastermind program and what we're going to be doing moving forward in 2020 to make sure that we are really moving your business forward, helping you scale and grow and figure out how you can better serve your audience with a product or service. All right, you guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 